What's up gamers, in today's video I'm going to be filling you in with everything you need to know about a character that gives your character a pogo stick to jump on. We're going to be talking about if you should or why you should pull for Miss Yan Yun. She's coming in the next two days and I know that you might have a thing for birds and I want to know if she's worth your precious primo gems. Now keep in mind that this isn't a guide video and I'm just letting you know more about her kit and her playstyle. So since I hate long intros and I know you probably do too, let's get straight into the video. So Shan Yun is a healer, a plunge attack support, and a very niche buffer. She can also fly around and reach high places if your shot can't. We all know her as Cloud Retainer, but when she comes out, her name will be Shan Yun. Her normal attacks aren't anything special, they're just animal attacks which you can use in your rotations to get some extra swirls in. Or something you can use if you're a perfectly sane individual that wants to try DPS Shan Yun. Now let's talk about her elemental skill. You can do her elemental skill three times, and if you're planning on doing that, just know that her animations are going to take 3 million seconds of your time. If you do her second or third skill, she will jump into the air and you have the option to plunge, and if you choose to plunge, then she will hit the ground doing damage in front of her. Her first E doesn't do that much damage and has a small AoE, her second E does slightly more damage with a slightly bigger AoE than her first one, but it's still not a lot. And lastly, her third E does the most damage and has the biggest AoE, but that doesn't matter because you shouldn't expect a healer to do a lot of damage, unless you're a fat filthy whale that can afford a C6 Baiju and a C6 Shan Yun. Now it doesn't matter if you do her skill once, twice, or even three times because she will always generate 5 energy particles. So if you don't want her to be on field for a long time and don't care about her damage, then I would recommend doing her skill once or twice. It also has a 12 second long cooldown, which is pretty long if you ask me. Her only use case for her skill in a rotation is to generate 5 energy particles, and that's it. But the more interesting part of her kit is her elemental burst. First she pulls out a mechanical looking bird and does a little bit of damage in an AoE and heals the entire team. It also gives her 8 stacks. Now what the small Shan Yun does, aka the bird does, is that it passively heals the entire team every 2.5 seconds. So her first initial cast of her burst does one big heal for the entire team, and the little bird just heals them constantly after. Keep in mind that the bird stays on field for 16 seconds. But that's not all the bird does, because while it's active, everybody in the party decides they want to be a lamenter like Shao, and now miraculously have the ability to jump up and down. Not in muddy puddles, Peppa Pig. Now, remember those 8 stacks I talked about at the beginning of the video? Well, every time a party member plunges and hits the ground, she loses one of those stacks. And after losing a stack, she does some AoE damage. Her burst is the most important part of her kit, because she allows anyone to jump up and down like they're on a pogo stick. It's also where most of her healing is going to be taken place. It's super cool that she has healing over time that heals the entire team and not just the on-field character unlike Jean. Her initial healing is less than Jean, so expect Jean to get fanfare faster if your entire team is in urgent need of a medic. But if they're not and have a little bit more than half health, Shan Yun's healing is going to be enough. Anyway, that's not all of her kit because we still need to talk about her passive, so let's get straight into that. Shan Yun's first ascension passive increases the plunge attack crit rate of her entire team depending on how many enemies were hit with her elemental skills plunge attack. If you're in a single target situation like in chamber 1 of the current abyss, then she'll only be able to hit one enemy, meaning she gives a 4% plunge attack crit rate increase. This crit rate increase goes up by 2% every time an enemy is hit and maxes out a whopping 10% plunge attack crit rate increase. Wow, that's going to be super helpful Hoyoverse, thank you Hoyoverse, I can't believe you were this generous Hoyoverse. Her second passive is a much better one. This is because what it does is it significantly increases the team's damage. Remember the 8 stacks that she gets after using her burst? Well, every time a character's plunge attack hits an enemy, the damage that their plunge attack does will be increased by 180% of Shan Yun's attack. The flat damage bonus capped at 9,000 damage, and this basically equals to almost 5,000 attack. This is actually a super good passive as it allows characters with high plunge attack multipliers like Shao and Diluc to do an insane amount of plunge damage. Her buff is super good, so I would recommend that you build her with a lot of attack. Anyway, now that you know everything about her kit, let's first compare her to her obvious competition. Jean. Now, they both do a big fat instance of team wide healing when you do their elemental burst. Even if Jean's healing is more than Qian Yun's, I think Qian Yun's is still good enough. Now, Jean heals one person passively over time, while Qian Yun heals the entire team passively over time. And they both can hold Verdissant Veneer, which is always good. That's their similarities, now for their differences. Qian Yun can hold Thrilling Tails, and that can buff her teammates, whilst Jean doesn't have many swords in terms of buffing for her team. Qian Yun can help with exploration at C0, whilst Jean doesn't really help. And Qian Yun isn't just limited to healing the entire team and carrying VV. She has another role which is buffing the on-field character who is typically going to be plunging. And her buff is actually pretty good, whereas Jean doesn't provide a lot for the team. But what would you expect? You're comparing a standard mana character to Xian Yun, who is a limited time character. Oh yeah, if you're enjoying the video, you wanna like, subscribe, and join my discord down below. I just recently had a thousand subscribers and hosted a giveaway on my server, and I'm planning on doing many more than that. So if you want to stand a chance to win some in-game items, make sure to join the discord. Plus, it takes only one click to join and you will really enjoy it there. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about her best teams. 
So let's start off with the most popular one, and one that I know that is going to be used by a lot of people, the Shao Hyperkai team. Now this is definitely one of the best teams to fit Xian Yun into. This is mainly because Xiao is a main DPS character that focuses primarily on doing plunge attacks. His entire kit revolves around plunging, and Xian Yun provides a huge buff for plunges. The rest of the team consists of Farina and Farzan. They both provide buffs which are super helpful for the team, and Farina also adds her own personal sub DPS damage, making this team a super strong one and one of the best Xian Yun teams. Another strong Xian Yun team is with the best Archon, the best Electro character, and the best DPS in the entire game, Raiden Shogun. The Raiden Shogun team that can use Xian Yun is this double Hydra team comp with Raiden, Farina, Yellen, and Xian Yun. This is one of the best Raiden Shogun teams and it used to require Jean, and now you can just use Xian Yun and it will be super strong, especially since in this team it's very possible to run 3 Link Tails on Xian Yun, since Raiden is the battery of the team and she can help her with her energy issues. Yellen is there to increase Raiden Shogun's damage because of her passive, and she also brings Hydra Resonance for her and Farina as well as doing a ton of off-field damage. Farina has the exact same role as Yelan in this team, which is simply to provide buffs and do off-field damage. I'm not going to be going too in-depth about her teams because that's going to get a separate video. So lastly, I'm going to give my unwanted opinion on Xian Yun. Now, before I start, I highly advise you to check out this video right here because I give my full opinion about Xian Yun in that video and in this video, I'm just going to condense it a bit. I think that she's a good character to pick up if you like her and if you use characters that can already incorporate plunges into their kit or if they're capable of doing so. Now, from a value perspective, I think that if you already invested a lot of your materials into Jean, then I don't think Xian Yun is a very good option. And I don't think that she's worth it because you'd rather spend your primos on someone that is way better than another character than to spend your primos on someone that is slightly better than another Another character. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments below if you're going to be pulling for Xian Yun. Also, please consider liking, subscribing, and joining my Discord down below because you won't regret spending two seconds clicking the link in my description to join. And if you're a new player that needs help with character building, setting up your teams, or just with Genshin in general, me and a bunch of other people will be glad to help you with all those problems. So be sure to join. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.